Hello everyone, this is Rosalyn from Rasiko World with another episode of Workplace Conversations. Artificial intelligence, popularly known as AI, is rapidly transforming the workplace. It has many benefits in terms of efficiency, experience, and productivity. However, it is important to discuss the challenges that come with artificial intelligence, especially at the workplace. Today on set, we have a guest that is going to help us understand AI and why it is important to impress it at the workplace. Allow me to welcome my guest to introduce himself. Yes, thank you very much. It's an honor to be here. My name is Joshua Iguru. Um, I've been an IT professional the last 20 years plus, and um, very excited to have this conversation about AI. It's a new technology that is coming up and is disrupting the whole world at large. And I'm looking forward to having this conversation. Thank you so much, Joshua. Yes. So let us handle the elephant in the room. Yes. Will AI replace as employees? I'm asking for myself and <laughs> millennials. <laughs> well, um, AI will not replace humans. Mm -hmm. um, what AI is currently doing at the current uh, rates that we are looking at, it will, mm -hmm. it's going to replace or to do a lot of the manual repetitive tasks. Oh. So if there's a task that you're doing repetitively, that one is a high potential for you to, for AI to take over that role. Mm -hmm. So if your task is to do something once, twice, thrice, the same, same thing every time, if your job description looks like and has tasks that are repetitive, you're a high candidate of being replaced by an AI or a system or an AI driven system. Yes. <laughs> I am laughing because <laughs> a lot of people have refused totally to impress AI. Yes. Especially the people from the older generation. Yes. They think that they are going to lose their jobs and they do not want to have any conversation around AI. So maybe to help us understand mm -hmm. what is AI yes. and how is it different from human, from machine learning, from like, okay. general overview of AI. So AI artificial intelligence is basically having computer systems which are doing uh, intelligent work mm -hmm. okay uh, so let's say you are you're training computers to be able to do uh, chatting with people for example to be able to automate specific tasks if there's a workflow that requires data input then it's able to manipulate that data and present it in another way that is what AI is it's basically trying to have um, intelligent computer systems now, machine language mm -hmm. is one of the foundations of teaching the computer systems mm. how to be able to think, to reason, and to identify things. Let me give you an example. Um, uh, if I may go back a bit, the foundation of AI mm. is data, mm -hmm. be it images, text, um, any type of data, Excel sheets, whatever. That's the foundation of artificial intelligence. Then machine language is another layer now comes in now to teach the computer systems what mm -hmm. to do. So you, let's say you need to teach it the difference between a cat and a dog. Oh. So you need to give it very many images of cats and dogs. And dogs. Uh -huh. and teach it, now tell it, these are cats. And these are dogs. These are dogs. Okay. So next time now, now, now the next phase now is now to teach it how to recognize the patterns. Mm. So the pattern in the cat is the ears, the nose, the fur, the way it looks like. The dog has a longer snout, depending on the, oh, on the right. type. The yes. And everything. yes, yes. So the foundation of AI is data, mm -hmm. whichever form of data, it be text, images, uh, Excel files, PowerPoint, emails, Word documents, all those. That's for the foundation of AI. Then you now have another layer of machine learning. How now the system is being taught? These are these are email sizes. These these are emails. These are photos. These are images. These are different file types. 
then now you have another layer now of now teaching it the patterns. Okay. Yes. So in a nutshell, that's what that's the main difference between uh, AI and machine learning. So machine learning is a is one of the basics of the AI. So a lot of people when they hear about AI, yes. they only think about chat GPT. GPT. Uh -huh. But uh, in my recent discoveries, mm -hmm. discovered that there are so many tools yes. for AI. I think there are over, I think even a hundred. Yes. There is even a, a, a tool that can teach you how to dress, how to paint your house, yes. how to spell words, how to pronounce things. Yes. There's so, so many. Yes. But people only know about ChatGPT. So uh, ChatGPT is what we call uh, a large language model. Mm -hmm. A large language model is a model, is a, is, is a subset of data that has been taught very many things. It's like Google. Google, yes. Mm -hmm. So so now OpenAI have their own, it's their calling, uh, ChatGPT. Mm -hmm. Google have their own large language model called Gemini. There are other large language it's models. even WhatsApp has one. Of yes, yes. Mm. So uh, now WhatsApp is part of the, what we call a meta group. Meta group mm -hmm. is Facebook, Instagram. Yes. WhatsApp, uh, all those. Now that is another AI. Also, they're like search engines. Yes, yes, oh. yes. So this is a basic way of having your own data. Because when you look at the model, like, sorry, I'll digress a bit. Mm -hmm. The the main business of Facebook is not social media. The main business of Facebook is data. Mm -hmm. And as we said before, the foundation of AI is data. data. Yes. Uh -huh. So the Facebook has your data, has your location, has your everything. So that's the data now it's now building on. Now you build the large language models on top of that. So that's how it's, you can create many large language models. You can create one even now, depending on your data. So what we've seen in the corporate world is mm. the, especially the financial sector where I am in, the banks and financial sector is not, they are not very keen going into that full-fledged and opening up ChatGPT because of data privacy issues and customer data. But they are already creating their own large language model within oh. their organization. Now with that, mm -hmm. it means now the financial sector can be able to serve clients faster. And also, especially after COVID, when everyone now went home, your loan, uh, your account opening is now online. Online. Yes. Withdrawal is online. Withdrawal is online. Everything, is online. everything, everything is online. Mm. So that has also. That's also a function of AI. You can actually leverage on that. All that information that you're getting, mm. we call them data points. Those are data points. Okay. Yes. So we have your your name, your ID, your everything. We we can see uh, where you swipe your card. All that. Though those are data points that are being captured by, by, by the financial institutions and they can be able to use that to serve you better. Okay. They now, we are going into a, an age whereby there is what we call hyper-personalization of offers. Mm -hmm. I know, let's say, Rosie goes to Galeria to do shopping at Carrefour. Once in a while, she goes into maybe Vivo. Uh, another time, she can go to another shop with him. Then now, the bank or the financial institution can be able now to go and work with those oh. shops and give you personalized offers. Oh. So that's how now, that's how now AI now, that's one of the examples that now we can now talk about and say in the financial sector, that's how they are using it. Now, if you do the same application to the various industries, mm. you can see how now AI is coming up and how it's going to help the companies to serve clients better. Okay. Yes. So tools, yes. tools, tools and types, just the same thing. Yes, yes. So the main thing and mm. one thing I would like us not to forget, mm. AI is a tool. Oh, AI is a tool. AI, AI is a tool to make us work faster and work better. Mm. Yes. So it is important I, we impress it. Yes, yes. Let's say, let's say, let's say you're doing a, a, a research for maybe a specific client segment. Mm -hmm. um, Instead of you going to the market and actually going to each shop and doing all that, you can go into ChatGPT or Gemini or Meta or whichever large language you can use. There are, there are many, uh, including Perplexity, Cloud, and you can do a query and tell it, I am a, I'm online 
a business person. I'm looking at expanding my business into this sec customer segment in maybe in East Africa and these are the countries I'm looking at. Do a deep dive research for me and tell me how viable it is and what is the strategy that I can use to onboard that new product. Mm -hmm. So that saves you time. Now that, depending on the query on the and what you are doing, can take you 10-15 minutes and it will give you a full proposal. Instead of going in, now, instead of you going around and seeking opinions about people, you can have that heavy lifting being done for you by artificial intelligence and uh, the large language models. Okay. Yes, so that's how fast it's moving. So, when I look back mm. the last one and a half years, mm. there's a lot which has come up, a lot more large language models are coming in. So, it's, it's a very exciting time to be in. Uh, if you're a positive person and if you're negative, it's going to affect you. Uh, so from, from your experience, yes. what are the benefits of using AI at the workplace? Okay, I know you've mentioned some, mm. but inclusively. In the workplace, it can be able to automate specific repetitive tasks. Mm. Uh, let's say you are you're analyzing specific data and you're picking from one system putting it in a specific spreadsheet, pulling in another system, like that, like that. The AI, if you can train it, mm -hmm. it can be able to pick for you that information and for the systems and present it to you. So if something that you're doing manually that's taking you two and a half hours, mm -hmm. it may take you 15 minutes. So you're using AI as a tool. So it makes your work easier, you're more efficient, and you're able to achieve more in the workplace. Mm -hmm. um, on the flip side as well, mm -hmm. If you automate a lot of those things, it means that those jobs are at risk. So as I said before, if your job is repetitive um, and it's manual, your job is highly, it's a very high candidate for AI to disrupt it. Mm. However, if I were the person doing that manual job, I would run AI and create the systems for me to do that work for me, not to wait for the organization to do that for you yes so if 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 you're able to do it that way the better for you as a person you're you're going to be able to make yourself relevant in the office as well as making your work more efficient so where do you get these trainings because i've not seen any college that is offering other than the online courses that mm -hmm. we are seeing mm -hmm. like is there for example, if I'm going to do maybe a diploma, like was there a diploma that has been designed? At the moment, oh, just in IT. No, no. At the moment, AI is uh, is, is is in the early stages, okay. so they are still trying to come up with uh, formal AI trainings. Although there are some aspect of it in the computer science and the IT and the bachelors, there is. There is the basics that you can learn in, in university on how a large language looks like. But now when you go to the nitty gritties of how ChatGPT works, mm. how cloud works, how meta works, is slightly different. Okay. So for me, if you want to start doing AI, mm. I would encourage people to go to the, to the current, the biggest university now is YouTube. I know. <laughs> YouTube is the biggest university now as you speak. Mm -hmm. So you can be able to start learning on the basics of AI from YouTube and you can be able to grow as you go along. It's never too late. It's still, we're still in the early stages of AI and it's changing at a very fast rate. Uh, in the last one and a half years, there's a lot of changes which have come in. Now we are talking about other things called agentic AI, whereby they are like agents. Mm -hmm. We can be able to do specific tasks like chatbots. You can go to a platform and it can create for you a chatbot for your work or for your business. Is it like Zuri of Safaricom? Yes, it's, oh. it's something like that. So like now you can see this Safaricom is, had started. Mm -hmm. It's still there, but it, they can still be able to fine tune it and be able to do that. Okay. So in terms of Zuri, you can see when you look at Safaricom as an organization, mm. if when you look at what Zuri is doing, mm. it's taking away a lot of the time from the customer contact care. center, yeah. customer care. Yeah. So the Zuri can be able to do the heavy lifting of the things that can be done repetitive 
you need to reverse an impressor transaction, you need to track where your airtime is going to, all those things. Zuri can be able to do that. Mm -hmm. Now, for the things that now require human intervention, so when now, now Zuri transfers it to a customer care support person. Yeah, I recently had that um, experience mm -hmm. with Zuri. I had sent money to the wrong till. Yes. So I asked it, took me through, and then Kafka Mali Kakwama. So I thought, now what do I do? But after two days, mm. my yes. money was refunded. Yes, yes. Yeah. So I know Safaricom are still doing some work around it, mm. but it's just the beginning of those things. Okay. Yes. So you've said <coughs> AI is basically about data. Yes. And with, with issues that involve data are very sensitive. Yes. There is even the act that was in put in place, the Data Protection Act. Yes. I think it is for 2022. I don't know if there's a new act, yes, but the one I read last was the Data Protection Act of 2022. Yes. So with AI, how do we ensure that data is protected even as we use it? So because now that could be again a major fear for most of the yes. institutions and yes. organizations. Actually, one of the main reasons why the a lot of the corporate organizations have taken up AI, including mm. by using ChatGPT, mm. is because of the various regulations that govern the various industries. Yeah. In the financial industry, there is that privacy in terms of data. We cannot be able to, you can't expose customer data. Yeah. So that's why now the financial organizations are now coming up with their own internal large language models to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a risk. It's one of the risks for, for AI. Mm -hmm. um, data, private, uh, uh, the personalization, the privacy mm -hmm. it's a, is, is a huge thing. Um, also, the biases. There are biases that can be, can be trained into a specific large language mm -hmm. models and can be able to be biased. Mm -hmm. So those are some of the risks that AI is coming with. So I can, I can see there are some regions like the European Union are coming up with more stringent AI regulations mm -hmm. on how the whole EU and how data is being transmitted and how data is being transformed. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that is a challenge that is there, but I'm foreseeing some governance coming into it as you go along. So, so as, 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 the, as the AI is developing, there is also another arm of governance and security which is coming up on how, how secure is your data, how you're securing your data, how is your personal data being secured, all those kind of things. So if, let's say, there was a bridge against my data, mm -hmm. with AI, who do I sue? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, that becomes very, very hard. Mm -hmm. um, I would say if it's data being used by an organization you can sue the, the organization. organization but if you put your data through open ai a chat gpt i'm sorry you can't sue anyone <laughs> why aren't colleges and universities impressing ai because i remember mm -hmm. i'm doing my mba mm. and uh last semester I was very sick and I had an assignment, so I put that assignment on copilot. <laughs> <laughs> Gave me the answers. Yes. And I submitted. Okay, I did some okay, adjustments here. Adjustments here and there. Yes. But I guess the lecturer just knew this is from copilot. So yes. The lecturer gave me twenty-five over sixty and wrote me, "Be serious." <laughs> <laughs>